Hey everybody, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. Today I'm going to show you how to properly lower a Vespa GTS or even a GTV, the GT200, pretty much any of the large frame Vespas starting around 2005 when the GT200 came out. Uh, this kit will pretty much apply. Here I got a 2024 uh, new GTS, so I'm going to show how to do it on a newer scooter. Only some minor differences on the installation, but pretty much the same steps. Uh, so I'm pretty much about 5'8". I can easily ride this scooter. Uh, it doesn't really affect the handling all that much in my experience. Uh, I'm going to drop the rear shocks about one inch or 25 millimeters. And out of Europe, there's a kit of the brackets that do that all correctly and safely. And the part number is MV302. 5003 you can find on the Scooter West web store. Um, the side stand works as normal. The only downside you have is it's a little harder to get up on the center stand. But not all that much. You can just see the rear tires a little higher because the shocks have been pretty much pulled up. And the way the center stands work on these Vespas is attached to the engine. So just a little bit more effort get it on and off the side stand or the center stand, maybe I'd recommend a side stand, especially if you know, you're trying to get on and off the scooter, you can just easily do that, get right off. Uh, I would say this is ideal for you know, somebody that's sh shorter than me, you know, five, six or shorter. I mean, these scooters were intended for kind of taller riders to begin with. Um, just gonna be a more comfortable ride, easier to reach the ground in many situations. And you won't be surprised, this one inch doesn't sound like much, but it's uh, quite a bit of difference. I mean, I can just tell by the stance of when you're rolling the scooter around as quite a bit lower versus a stock GTS. Definitely much lower than the 150s. The 150s are nearly as high as the, the 300s. They just have a little bit narrower seat and different profile um, and I've covered solutions on how to lower those uh, 150cc scooters in the past. Pretty simple on the Primavera and Sprint. So let me show you the bike at its stock height so you can kind of get my posture sitting on the bike in its stock height here. So here's the stock height 2023 Vespa GTS. I'm approximately 5'8", and I have no problem riding it if you're for instance, 5'6", 5'4", 5 5 5 you may benefit from lowering the scooter a little bit. So it's gonna be a pretty simple install. Uh, these basic parts are included. They're machined and manufactured in Germany and have been well tested. The part number on these is MV3025003. We have them on the Scooter West web store. Um, I'll get right to it on installation. Uh, it's intended to be used with a completely stock scooter with a stock muffler and stock shock absorbers. Uh, one other little tip, another option to lower the seat a little bit is actually send the seat out to an upholstery shop, have them shade the foam a little bit or reshape the seat, and that will help you as well. I don't recommend like drastic changes to the suspension because it changes the geometry of the scooter and how it rides and how the center stand and the side stand work as well. Um, but this pretty much lowers about an inch, 25 millimeters, and it's definitely noticeable. So, so let me quickly go over all the tools you're going to need. You're going to need various 3 inch. You're going to need various 3 8 drivers. So I got a ratchet, I got a T-handle, I'll kind of speed things up. I have a torque wrench. This goes up to 100 foot-pounds. Uh, works perfect for something like this. Various sizes of 3 8 extensions. Then you're going to need a six millimeter Allen key, preferably one that goes on the end of a socket. T30 Torx driver, remove the muffler. You're gonna need an eight millimeter Allen as well. You could get away with the basic keys, but since we're torquing them, some of these fasteners, it's good to have the ones that go on the end of a 3.8 socket. You got a 17 millimeter and a 13 millimeter socket and 3.8 drive. Uh, we have this large stud that we have to remove that's locked tight in place. So you can see I have a rather large um, half-inch wrench. You could use a big breaker bar or 
electric or air pneumatic uh, impact would do the trick. A big 24 millimeter socket, I got an extension on that. Uh, two combination wrenches, 17 millimeter and 13 millimeters. And I got a needle nose, that's helpful. I got a T30 Torx driver, I don't really have here, that's to remove the air box. You're gonna need some type of blue Loctite anaerobic sealant, which is um, you know, commonly referred to as Loctite. Usually the blue stuff is the 3-bond uh, 1303, which is similar to uh, the Loctite blue. I don't remember what the number is, but uh, definitely pretty important to have. It's definitely pretty helpful to have something to heat up the Loctite on the stud. I'm gonna quickly do it the dangerous way with a torch. You could do it with a, a heat gun as well. Just obviously if you're gonna use an open flame, you need to know the risk of using something like this. And there's our T30 Torx driver. All right, so go ahead and take the left hand bracket. There's a stud and there's a flat headed screw. And you wanna put a small amount of blue Loctite on the threads. Go ahead and thread the stud on. Have a six millimeter Allen. We're gonna carefully pinch that down in a vise. I don't have a soft jaw because I do need to lock that up and it may put a small mark in it. Not gonna hurt anything. And we're gonna tighten it to about 15 to 16 foot pounds. And that's pretty much that's all set up and ready for the installation. All right, so I have the GTS clamped in the front. Uh, this kit does work on pretty much all years of the GTS, even the old GT200s. And we're gonna put the tool jack, this is our Scooter West scissor jack, put it right under the center of the frame. Kind of just forward of the header pipe and the stands. And we're gonna take the pressure off the shocks. You're gonna need to remove the muffler and loosen up the air box. So I have the center supported. The tire's just barely touching the ground. That's probably all we need to do right there. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the muffler. So you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket, to loosen up the clamp. If you're dealing with an older GTS, the clamp's uh, much further up the header. These have a longer header on these 2003 and later. And you're gonna need a T30 Torx driver to remove the three screws that hold the muffler to the subframe. All right, so 17 millimeter socket. Nice easy clamp on these 2023s. Something they made easier to work on. So the clamp loose, just like that. And keep in mind the exhaust gasket. Uh, they're intended for one-time use. Uh, if it's still in pretty fresh shape, you could technically get away with reusing it. Anytime we change out a rear tire, uh, we replace those uh, bushings in there. So these are all T30 Torx headed screws. They have two washers, all the same. And now that's loose and two of them removed, kind of be prepared for the, the muffler to want to drop. And a lot of times I'll support the muffler. Obviously you want to make sure it's not warm. And when the screw's just ready to back out, we'll support the weight of the muffler here. Just like that. And pulls right off. Set that aside. And now you can see the lower uh, shock mount. Got the nut, the washer. And if the tire just has a little bit of pressure on it, the shock will come right off. And you can kind of push it to the side. Uh, the next step is we need to remove the stock stud that's in the swing arm bracket. And oftentimes they do have Loctite, so we may need to put some heat on this. We're gonna take a little bit of time, to get this hot enough where it's gonna break the Loctite free. 24 millimeter socket on a rather large ratchet or 
even an impact wrench might do the trick. So while this is hot, let's see if we can break this free. It's in there rather tight. It's not intended to ever be removed. There we go. You can feel the friction of the Loctite and those threads. And have that removed. So we got a torque wrench set to about 32 foot-pounds. We got the blue Loctite. We had the bracket that we tightened this stud in the first step. And this pretty large flat-headed screw here. I got an eight millimeter Allen socket for this. Let's go ahead and set that all up. Go ahead and put some Loctite on there, just about that much. You don't need to get too crazy with it. And we'll go ahead and thread this in. There might be some of the remnants of the old Loctite. So you might have a little bit of friction. Kind of just let gravity do the work. You want this um, bracket to kind of point down and speed up with a something electric to drive that in, or I'm just gonna use a T-handle real quick. And we'll kind of get it right to about like that. At this point, let's get our torque wrench. It's got a little extension in there as well. And there we go. So as you can see, the shock doesn't reach. We're gonna move on to the left side and loosen the air box and start working on the left side and then we'll come back to the right side. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the air box on these newer scooters. It's gonna be a T30 Torx driver. Uh, the older scooters, you can use a large number three Phillips driver. Just got one screw out. Then the middle position screw here. Pretty much the same screw. At this point, see, I can lift the whole air box out of the way. All right, so we got the original left-hand side shock bracket. Do a 13 millimeter socket. Get it right onto the main shock bolt. You need a 17 millimeter combination wrench. I'm gonna break that nut that's on the back side free. And again, I have it lowered to a point where the tire's just barely touching the ground with the scissor jack, kind of supporting the center of the scooter frame. The single nut out. And the bolt's pretty close to wanting to come out. You can see with the tire just sitting there, if there's a lot of pressure on the shock, it's being nearly impossible to pull that bolt out. Uh, next, we're gonna have a six millimeter Allen. I'm gonna put on a ratchet here. And you're gonna need a 13 millimeter combination wrench. And spin the two nuts off. Pull the bolt out, both these uh, bolts are identical, the Allen screws. This side you might have to use the open end side of the combination wrench. There we go. There's the nut and the screw. And at this point, I can pull the bracket out. Keep in mind the shock does have these two spacers that will pull right out as well, but we want to leave them behind. So get the bracket out of, out of the way, the original bracket. There's two spacers that look like this. They stay with the shock absorber, so we're just gonna leave them alone. So here's the old bracket, just like that. There's the pair of brackets. The original bracket does have the little bridge in there, but this work pretty much works the same. Uh, you have the writing that will face out. So go ahead and straddle those two bolts. You kinda gotta hold everything together. I'm gonna put everything together pretty loose. Let's put the screw through, use the exact same hardware that was original for the scooter. And just we'll start these by hand here. Kind of just got to feel your way around. Have both started, so we're set there. And at this point, we're gonna lower the scissor jack until we're able to send the shock bolt back through, the lower shock bolt. So we're pretty close right here. 
You may need to make some little minor adjustments with your scissor jack. There we go. Thread the large nut on and then we're going to go back to the smaller lower hardware and tighten both those. You're going to tighten those to about 16 foot pounds. They do have like a locking feature of the nut and the inner one. It's a little harder to get to. And a 13 millimeter socket. Take our 17 millimeter combo. And if you want to torque this with a torque wrench, about 30 foot pounds. At this point, we can shift the air box back into place. We need to wiggle it around. and use our uh, T30 Torx driver here. Get everything to line up. Sometimes this mud flap is also part of the fastener for the, the rearmost airbox fastener here. So it kind of traps the, the inner mud flap for the wheel. So that one started and move on to the middle position screw. And maybe we're checking the front position screw. Uh, you may need to have a little L style Allen key with a Torx drive on to check that because you can't get a, a straight shot. Another option is to remove these skirts. That's quite a few more steps to get these out of the way. Go ahead and tighten those to about hand tightness right there. If you're looking for a trick to tighten that frontmost airbox fastener uh, on these newer models, got the T30 Torx driver. I have a long quarter, quarter inch extension. I'm going to go ahead and hold the socket on the other side of the vent. This is only on the, the, I think 2020 and newer where they have the little vent. And at this point I can use a little flashlight in here and locate that fastener and then go ahead and torque it. Just make sure it's torqued. Um, sometimes I do see these air box fasteners come loose because there's a lot of vibration from the engine that affects those fasteners. That's why they have the star style lock washer on there. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and move to the right side uh, reconnect the shock and install the muffler. So I pretty much have this eyelet of the lower right shock in line with this stub right there. And we're gonna go ahead and turn the shock. You can see how it's offset, how there's an offset on that, that mount there. And we're gonna carefully roll that over the stud. If you saw that motion I did, I kind of rolled it over and then you could slide it right over that the stud and exposes the threads. We'll go ahead and put that same flat washer, put the nylon locking nut, get your 17 millimeter socket. And if you want to torque it again, 30 foot pounds. Just pretty tight, just like that. Now it's time to get the muffler back in place. So you can see it offsets the shock absorbers about 25 millimeters or one inch. So the muffler, I got the, the exhaust gasket still in good shape. Uh, several of my videos on changing tires, I show how to change those exhaust gaskets and there's some tricks to it. And to support the muffler, go ahead and get the, the fastener started. I would just suggest getting them all started while everything's loose. 17 millimeter socket. Go ahead and tighten the clamp here. And more or less kind of a feel is typically how I like the to torque. There's exhaust clamps. I think there is a spec, it's, it's pretty low. I think it's like 18 foot pounds. And then we'll go back to these. And if you want to torque these, about 16 foot pounds. And that pretty much is everything you need to know about doing the shock lowering kit for the GTS. So you're left with that original stud. You may want to save it if you ever want to bring it back to the stock height. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. The install guide, a little bit more complicated than you'd expect for just dropping the shocks a little bit. Again, you want to keep the stock muffler if you're going to do something like this. It's many of the aftermarket mufflers. Even with the original stock suspension, you have a tendency to touch the skirt. Uh, the original mufflers kind of engineered to kind of tuck into the frame. Now, there may be aftermarket pipes that do work well with it, but we haven't checked those options out. 
Uh, see you on the next one. Robot here from Vest Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego.